my name is Judy and I'm the City Stitcher and welcome to my Floss Tube channel. Today is Sunday, October the 3rd and it is supposed to be a very sunny day today. Not uberly warm temperatures um, and it's a fairly persistent wind. Um, so the sunroom uh, by late this afternoon will be glorious and warm so I am going to try and make it a slurpy day. I have to get all my tasks accomplished so you know come about four o'clock I can come back in and sit and stitch and be warm and all that lovely thing so I need to hurry up and get my floss tube done so it's done and being processed. Um, so this is a channel about cross stitch so if you are a new viewer thank you for stopping by and spending some time with me and if you are a returning viewer thank you so much for coming back. Uh, I really do appreciate all of you who come back and watch my slow little dirty in the world of cross stitching. Um, so just wanted to have a quick chat about some of the comments last week. Uh, so thank you so much for all of the really positive comments on the never ending nativity and uh, seeing it in its fully finished uh, manner. Um, you know, somebody made the comments like you should feel really, really accomplished. And the answer was, I don't feel really, really accomplished. I'm I'm glad that it's done. I'm glad I'm glad that I'm done the stitching. I'm glad that it's fully finished. I'm glad that it's ready to go for Christmas. I'm still it's a little too close for me to be really being able to truly appreciate it for what it is. Um, so ask me again in December. So probably it will pop up in one of the videos in December when I've been over at my parents place and seen it. That's probably enough time distance for me to, to be able to sit back and, and really enjoy it. Because right now it's a little too close, so ask, ask me again in December. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's done, it's finished, it's ready to go. I'm really pleased, I am pleased with how it looks. Like I say, it looks better in front of my friend's eyes, but anyway, that's, <laughs> it's my mother's, it's my mother's. No issues with that. Um... Uh, just responding to a couple of other comments. Oh, on the never ending nativity. I forgot to say this last week and I really, really do need to say it. That thing would not have been accomplished without the help of Charlotte. Because I never would have gotten the camel done if Charlotte hadn't been in there somewhat regularly <laughs> emailing me and sending me some pictures so I could figure my way through that, that camel. So it's kind of a Judy Charlotte. Uh, finish. So full kudos to Charlotte for helping me get through that camel and all of her guidance. It was, it was and still is truly, truly appreciated um, for helping me get through that and helping me get it accomplished. Because if it had been me and myself, I probably would have gotten it accomplished. I don't know, it would have looked as, it would have turned out as well as it did. But anyway, so Charlotte, again, Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart and clearly my mom uh, thanks you as well because given that the camel is her favorite part of the whole thing, you were an instrumental piece of getting that uh, accomplished. So thank you very much. Um, I forgot to write down the name but somebody had commented on, St on the Stony Creek that they were, again, so just like Joanne, so Joanne's planning on starting a nativity, a Stony Creek nativity in December. Um, this other individual, she's also planning on starting a Stony Creek in December. So apparently it's Stony Creek December. That's not what I'm doing, but Stony Creek December is good too. Um, and she's starting Isaiah 9. So I, of course, rushed right over to the Stony Creek website and looked it up and went, I had a moment like, ooh, I might need to get that. And I went, no, no, you're good. You're good. You need to, you have other Stony Creeks. So that, that one in terms of the stashing and acquisitioning and all that kind of stuff, I did very well at. I was like, ooh, that's a nice one. And I went, nope, nope. You've got other things in your Stony Creek stash. And if you run out of the of the stuff that's in your current Stony Creek stash, then you can come back and look at this. I've made a note of it. But we'll see how many years it takes me to work my way through my Stony Creek stash. Anyway, but congratulations, you made me look. <laughs> and you know, I always love to look at new things. Um, uh, Sarah Hughes from the Stitch and Mummy uh, watched uh, the epi two episodes ago when we were talking about Stitch and Mummy September and so it was really great to see her there and chiming in on that particular episode. Um, we'll talk about her again on a couple of things. Um, 
I my favorite comment is she's like yeah I've been thinking about designing something as a burst sampler <laughs> and in my head my response is as far as I'm concerned I think you have designed something as a burst sampler because I think that temperature tree would make an awesome burst sampler I think <laughs> as we said as I said in that particular episode I think it would be great anyway uh yeah anyway so I also managed to have seemed to have tempted her as well uh, as Joanne to whether or not they need to uh, get those gingerbread valley ornaments so yeah anyway with that as always uh, comments questions topics you'd like me to address are always welcome always happy to have the uh, the virtual conversation going in the comments down below <laughs> as I sent in an email to somebody else that I watch on floss tube I do acknowledge that sometimes when I talk at you while the video, while I'm watching the video, I am acknowledging that you probably can't hear me. So <laughs> I'm finding another way to make my comment to you. Anyway, with that, uh, let's get into my stitching uh, for this week. So this week's topic is my wrap up of September. So unlike the other weeks where we usually do the topic at the end, we're gonna deal with the topic right off the get go. So as, for those of you who've been watching for a while, as you know, my uh, September focus piece is the Stony Creek Tapestry of Life, which has been uh, languishing in my stash for mm, 20, 25 years. Yeah, a really long time. And it was interesting, as I was stitching this week, I really had moments where I was like, man, like you, you haven't gotten very much accomplished in this at all. Like for having spent, you know, theoretically as much time as, you know, for having this as your focus piece in September, you, you didn't really seem to get a lot accomplished. And then I took it off of the scroll frame. And then I went, okay, it, it, <laughs> I felt, I felt better going, no, no, you did get something accomplished. So here is, Here's where I am at the end of September. So again, it's this, when you get to see this, where you go like, okay, you really did, you really did get something accomplished in September. Cause when, you know, when you're working on it and you're like, I was going as far as I'm concerned, I had this plus a little bit down here, right? Which in, I know, I know, I should have known that I had actually done more than that. But when you're working on the scroll rods, you're only seeing a limited a bit limited amount of your stitching <clears throat> anyway so in hindsight when I pulled it off of the of the scroll rods because this of course is going away for the rest of the year it's at this point as far as I know this is not coming back out but I got to sit back and go no you you did get right you did get all of the words in here accomplished you got you know I'm gonna say 80% of this border finished and I probably got about two thirds of the way up. I was really hoping to get all the way up here to this next border, but it just didn't happen. And that's how that worked out. The funny thing is uh, when I was finishing up my stitching on September the 30th, and I really did say like, you do, you do need to go to bed. Uh, so there's a few more words left in here and there's a me at the end here. So I think I'm about four words short near. I was like, you should maybe bring this out tomorrow and just, finish up that line and I went no I'm <laughs> at the point I'm like no I'm okay putting it down so I uh, finished the the two additional greens in that uh that border at the bottom of the current word section that I'm working on so again three three colors of green in here four stitches each so I put them in and I finished I finish off the four because I don't like carrying for me, the carry down to where they are next is, is too far for me. Personal preference, everybody does what works for them. You do what you're happy with. I do what I'm happy with, even though it sometimes drives me nuts. Um, so I got the other, the other greens in there. Uh, so yeah, so I'm again, so the sort of there's joiner parts between these two that I haven't done because again, that's about five colors of green and about six stitches in total. And I just wasn't up for that at that point in time. But again, so that's one of those days when it comes back out, it, you just have to sit down and go, that's what I'm working on 
today and tomorrow is getting up that fiddly bit done. So came up and as I said, so I was doing a, a strand of words and then I was coming over here and doing a little bit. So again, this is all one of the many colors of 500 greens that go into this border. And again, this is, as I said, you know, each of these is at least four stitches. In some cases, it's really exciting and it's got like five stitches. And again, because I can get them in, I can start them using the loop method, finish them off, run my thread behind the existing stitches, and then I'm positioned for the other colors that go around it, Then, which then, of course, turn into, you know, two or three stitches per color. I've got something to anchor them to. So... Yeah, so that's where I am. Uh, yeah, so from coming from a position where I was like going, you didn't really get much accomplished this month, I actually felt really good about this when I took it off the score rods and went, no, no, this is a really decent start to this thing so that the next time I pick it up, you know, again, I'll start with the words and I'm heading up because my goal is to get to the top, then work across and then come back down and fill in all the borders. So yeah, so that's Tapestry of Life, and that's where we, uh, that's where we're leaving her at the end of uh, September. So, yeah, happy with that. So then, of course, we have the ongoing temperature tree which is bringing me, I know, I know, an inordinate amount of pleasure. And again, this was my reward for doing things on the Stony Creek. So I got a lot of, I got a lot accomplished on this one as far as I'm concerned. So here's where we are on the temperature tree. I took it off the key snaps for you. So I finished my, uh, May branch and I'm almost finished my June branch. There's about 25 stitches up here at the top left to go. Um, I finished putting in all of the April leaves and here's, I know, not, not everybody's into the weather like I am at this point in time. So this leaf here, this aqua leaf here, this is the coldest day in April. And this orange leaf down here is the warmest day in April. And those, of course, are exactly one week apart. <laughs> now, I have also managed to get all of my May leaves in. And I will say that sort of when I am stitching this, when I feel like I've accomplished, so on my page where I've got all the temperatures, I'm highlighting them as I go through because I really do a color completion. So I start with the first leaf and then I stitch every every leaf in that month in that color. Um, and so then I when I went according to the piece of paper I've stitched, should have stitched all of the, the leaves of that month, I really do come back and I actually count to make sure that I've got the right number on there, that I haven't accidentally thought that I did something that I didn't do. And for me, uh, so new colors, so there's more orange uh, in May, which is always nice, trending up, and we all know how much I like warmer weather. We have a brand new color here, 3801. So this is the warmest day in May, which was a little above 27 degrees Celsius. Isn't that a glorious number? Ah, that was a lovely day. And three days later, we had the coldest day in May, which was just under three to get three degrees Celsius at 2.8. And this is why this, like stitching this up is just fascinating me where I go like, I, I know that I live in a climate that can swing wildly and dramatically and all that kind of stuff. And in May, uh, this doesn't surprise me. I was going to go back and check and see, cause in my head I go, hmm, cold weather. That's got to be the May long weekend. <laughs> But I didn't go back and verify, but it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest because uh, that's usually how it works. We have a long weekend in May and it's usually always cold and miserable and rainy and all that kind of stuff. But I, again, I just found it fascinating that we went from 27 degrees down to just under three degrees in the space of three days. Anyway, uh, so I haven't looked terribly far ahead into June. Um, but I know at the first 
the color of the first leaf is and I had a little chuckle in my head so come back next week and see how that one looks. Um, so I think I'm doing really well on my temperature tree. Um, one of Sarah's comments was that she enjoyed working on the temperature tree and the mystery of it. And I think that's great. And for those of you who enjoy the mystery aspect of it, I think that's great too. We all know that I don't like a mystery, which is why I'm totally fine stitching it now because I really have, it'll be interesting as I get further along because we're gonna get closer to, to time periods where I might have to wait and see what the weather's like. Um, so I'm, I'm bombing along on this and this is great. So I'm really happy with how this is coming along because it means I'm gonna, so my expectation is I'm gonna get another finish accomplished. Um, and again, I love how this looks. I love how it's coming along. I love stitching on it. I love looking at these temperatures. Um, next weekend when I'm over at my parents' place for Thanksgiving, I'm planning on taking this along because my dad and I have chatted about this and he hasn't seen it yet, but I will be taking him along so that he can have a look at my temperature tree. I think he'll find it fascinating as well. And I'm glad, uh, again, one of the other comments that came in was that uh, watching me stitch it and <laughs> talking about how much fun and how much enjoyment I'm getting out of it pushed them. So they had, my understanding is that they had the chart, but watching me has pushed them over the edge to saying I should work on it. So they've pulled it out and started. So I'm really happy about that. And I hope you enjoy it just as much as I am because I'm loving this one. So the other uh, part to this is for those of you who are working on temperature trees or have done other of Sarah's temperature, of Sarah's temperature uh, patterns or other people's temperature patterns, I do have a question for you because I'm thinking that I should put like the colors and what they mean. Like, so I can look at this and go, oh yeah, cold, 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 and look at this purple, which means it's like colder than minus 24. I know that, but for anybody else looking at this, they wouldn't necessarily know that. So I'm just wondering if anybody out there has, who's worked on a temperature design of some kind, what they did about, did they do anything about what the individual colors meant in terms of temperature or are they just letting it stand on their own which is hey fair comment as well I'm just debating like like do I try to do something at the bottom here that sort of shows shows the like so do it as a, one big long continuous band underneath this with all the gradations and put the I don't know tell me what you think I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with that one Anyway, so yes, please feel free to comment below if you've done that or if you're like, nope, totally fine, <laughs> totally fine leaving it, letting it stand alone. Because sometimes I look at the colors and I'm trying to remember. Um, this one will, I will be able to work my way back because I go like, okay, that's 27. And I know that um, the first green starts when it's above plus three degrees. And I know that anyway, so there's certain things where I can look and go like, oh yeah, that's fine. And then I have to but the stuff in between, like what exactly does yellow mean? Even I go like, I can do the math and I can get there, but I don't look at yellow and go, ah, yellow means X. So anyway, let me know your thoughts on that one. And then of course, because we are now in the month of October, new month, new start. And you know, I was gonna do this to you. I'm gonna show you what my project is and I'm not gonna tell you what it is. I think for some of you who are really good about your knowledge about charts will recognize this right off the get-go. So for quite a few of you, you'll be able to guess readily. For some of you, if you don't want to spend as much time online looking at charts as some of us do, you may not be able to guess, but just totally fine tune in next week because I'll be very explicit about what it is. But this is my new October project. I'm working this on a Q-snap so it's all wrinkly down here and I'm totally fine with that. So I'm loving how this is looking. Um, so again, it's moving along fairly quickly because this is uh, two days worth of stitching. So this is quite frankly, October the 1st and October the 2nd. Today is October the 3rd and I have not yet stitched. 
so I haven't done anything on this today. Um, it's coming along lovely. I am not using the called for colors for the words. In fact, I don't remember exactly what the called for is, but let's talk about the fabric. So I'm doing this on a 32 count linen. I think it's 32, maybe 28. I have to go back and check. I'm pretty sure it's a 32 um, called Poison Apple from Color and Cotton. Now I don't remember where I picked it up. Um, I remember picking it up because I wanted a color and cotton. So I was sh shopping somewhere and they had color and cotton fabric. And we all know I'm not really good with a, a brown neutral. Anyway, so once I eliminated those, this was there and I went, let's get the bold color. Let's see, you know, one, let's see what it looks like. Let's see how it feels and all that kind of stuff. So I, and again, as I was kidding up 2021, uh, this is the fabric that came to mind. I was like, that is the perfect fabric for the design I'm working on. Again, this is n absolutely definitively not the called for fabric. I, so part of the other thing that I've changed, and I'm going to hold this up because we'll see if it can happen, if we can see it. Sorry, fuzz. Yeah. Oh, you can see it a little bit. So the first letter of each of these words, I am using DMC A12, A12 for. So you can see a little bit of the sparkle. As always, um, in real life, you can see it. It's a lot harder to see it on the camera. And again, for an effect. So in the, the called for, for this has one color of over dyed threads for this and then a different color of over dyed threads for the rest of the word. So I am doing this in a twelve eight twenty three, and I'm doing the words in just the regular DMC 823. And I'm, I, I love how it looks and I love how that navy blue looks on this particular green. I think it looks fantastic. So I'm very happy with my choices on that front. Um, so yeah, happy with the floss choice, happy with the fabric choice. Um, I, <laughs> as usual, I started in the middle. I think a lot of people when they're working on this piece tend to start in the top left. I started in the middle because we all know I've got a hang up about making sure that my stitched piece is centered on the piece of fabric that I have for it. I know. Weird, in, idiosyncratic, unique to me, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's just me. It's what makes it's what makes my brain happy. So I go with it. So my plan is I'm working my way up. So I so the M is really the middle of the piece, and so I worked um, to the left. So this is as far to the left as it goes, right? So there's maybe a couple of stitches of other things that are further left of that as you go up or down. But really, this is the, the far left side of this piece. Um, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to work my way up and over and down back to here and where we come down further. So there is, a, there is another question here and I know um, I'm debating using some glow in the dark thread on this particular piece. Again, it is not part of the called for threads. So this is me just, you know, doing my own things, which is not atypical. So my question for you, so I was, I was reading online about it because there's a couple of options. Um, but somewhere online I had read that um, it, it's not the, the glow in the dark thread doesn't do well if you iron it. So just throw in the comment out there if any of you have used it, um, when, if you've got like, oh my goodness, caution, 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 please let me know that, or oh my goodness, I've used it and I totally loved it and here's what I used, love those comments as well. And whether or not you know if you had any, if you ran into anything or read anything about ironing not working very well or the thread not uh, reacting well when it's ironed because of course I am doing this on a linen and I am doing it in a Q-snap and so we've clearly got some wrinkles and I'm expecting that those wrinkles will be there you know till the end um, so 
just a question about I mean I guess one of the other questions is no it really does it doesn't react well um, so I I could still do it but I would have to be really close to the end before I put it in and then I might have to you know put this onto scroll rods although I was originally I was going like I don't think you've got scroll rods that fit this and then I was like no you might actually have I know that I'm sitting here going no nope, nope I think upstairs you might actually have a set of scroll rods that will fit this but when I started I just like put it on the Q snap it's two days so I suppose part of today's task is figuring out whether I'm going to continue using a Q snap or whether I'm actually going to put it onto some scroll rods check back next week anyway so this is my start it's it's moving along fabulously like I say for uh, two days worth of stitching I think I'm making great progress on this um, I'm trying to temper my excitement about my pacing going just because this is what you got accomplished in the first two days which was quite frankly a Friday and a Saturday let's not assume that that's going to be your pace for the rest of the month so we'll see how it goes we'll see how it goes but again thrilled with the fat the color fabric choice thrilled with how the etoile and the regular DMC is working um, I'm having no issues with the A12. I'm having moments going like, hmm, this looks like a really uh, great option for colors that historically probably I would have accomplished by using one strand of DMC and some Krynic blending filament, right? When you go up to Krynic number four, it does tend to make it quite a bit more sparkly. And again, so this is not sparkly sparkly it's just a hint of sparkle which I think is perfect for what I for this particular piece um, so that's my that's my debate um, about yeah anyway thinking thinking always thinking about things and going now I will also point out the DMCA 12 range has a very limited color range and I have no idea of whether or not they're bringing in um, additional uh, colors into this line or not who knows <laughs> not surprisingly DMC doesn't reach out to me to find out what I'm thinking and as far as I can see they haven't said anything in particular about that but again so here is my October start oh I was gonna say the other thing it's interesting the color and cotton because when I got the color and cotton I was like I, I was like this is fine I will say having worked on it I feel like it is a little more slubby than the other uh, linens that I have worked on now I don't have selvage on here so I don't know what their base is and I don't run I don't work enough on linen to be able to readily go like oh clearly this is X Y or Z for their base um, but I am finding it it feels you know again because when I'm stitching it I'm you know up this close with it I feel like it is a little more slubby um, than some of the other linens that I've worked on I mean it's not horrendously bothering me but there have been a couple of areas where I actually have had to work at it because I was like I wasn't I wasn't comfortable and where my where my stitches were gonna lie so I've had to clean up a couple of okay a few of them um, so it's a, it was interesting um, it's not to say that I would buy color and cotton again um, you know because again uh, I was talking with a friend of mine this week <laughs> she made a comment she's like I know I know I know color trumps all the rest of it which is true color trumps um, you know I always 32 even weave is my is my preferred fabric so whether it's a Lugan or a Jobelin I'll take either one of those in a 32 count that's where my happy spot is but clearly uh, the tapestry of life is being done on the linen my October piece is being done on the linen why did those two pieces end up on linen because of the color that was available which as far as I was concerned suited the piece that I was working so colored trumps most of the time I'm still not gonna go up to 48 count or 46 count or 52 97 whatever those crazy numbers are I'm not doing those and again I probably wouldn't go down to an Ada either um, just because I prefer like probably a 28 count and higher is 28 to 40 is where I will live and in within that range color will trump um, whether it's an even weave or a linen so 
but yeah so again as you stand back I think in the camera that this looks this looks black um, which is you know technically closer to what the called for colors are um, but in real life again when you come up to it you can see that it is navy and I'm really glad that I'm doing it in the navy really happy with the A12 happy with how this is coming along check back next week when we talk more about this particular designer and again I know some of you will know right off the get-go which is totally fine okay so one of the items from last week I just wanted because I forgot to bring it um, now I have not gone to Michael's to do my said task of looking for shadow box frames and I'm looking so part of it is I'm also doing my research as to whether or not I you know I'm looking at Amazon I'm actually looking at Ikea but Ikea is having some supply chain issues as are a lot of uh, retailers these days which I totally hey everybody's having supply chain issues we've all just got to be patient um, so I I'm doing some research on shadow boxes and what I want um, so I'm bringing them out again because here's the part so this is the piece of paper that I cut out saying this is the design size for those charts and how do I know because I very graciously wrote 28 count on there so there's another piece of paper <laughs> in the next room that looks exactly like this only it says 32 and it's smaller and again this is literally how I came to the decision as to the count that those hands-on design uh, kitchen counter charts need to be stitched on is because how I want the finished size to look and quite frankly now that I found these that is the determining factor so on 28 count Here's the, here's the size of the design and here's the size of the, the mini uh, kitchen equipment. Okay, this, the whisk, the spatula, and the slotted turner. So I think these together at a shadow box will be perfect. Now, I haven't started stitching them so when I come to it so the answer is I'm probably going to get the shadow boxes before I even start stitching so that I know that I'm happy with where I'm at so you know I will literally go find the shadow box and then put these things in them and make sure I'm happy you know because I do have the debate about whether I do the stitch piece plus maybe it should have a fabric border around it in which case same thing that's why I'm not getting rid of the 32 count piece of fabric because I may say maybe you size down to 32 so that you can have a bigger border but it will end up on the final size of the shadow box that I end up getting to say okay here's the proportions that I like so again finding the shadow box is going to be a critical piece before I can actually start the stitching for this um, so that I can make sure that I once I put it all together I'm going to be happy with the end product and I don't want to start stitching on 28 count then find the shadow box go nuts it would have looked better if you'd done it on 32 okay so the other one um, so while I was doing that uh, now that I have these and these are the color inspiration for what I'm going to do um, for this is how I'm coming up with my color palette for that kitchen counter series sorry I just realized I need to extract one of my boards <laughs> okay so I then literally have gone out to the store to uh, figure out um, the colors that I'm potentially going to use for this so yes I went to the store I took my I took my products with me um, and of course came up with a couple of options so part of this is um, it looks a little bit different again depending on the light where you're standing in the light the time of day all that kind of stuff and of course it looks different in the camera as well which is why I'm doing part of this on camera because I just want to see how it looks so I had a I believe it or not I had a really hard time coming up with something that would go with this royal blue so I looked at DMC I looked at anchor I looked at classic color works I 
I looked at Weeks Dye Works. I kind of looked at Gast, but as everybody knows, not <laughs> the stores don't necessarily have good selection in the general arts threads these days because, you know, supply chain, timing, anyway, whatever. So I ended up getting a couple of colors of Splendor, which from Rainbow Gallery, which are silks. I can't, I know. Because um, I couldn't quite figure out. So this is the one that I think is best. And it's interesting because I think on camera that one looks best as well. So this is what I got for uh, the royal blue. While I was there, I went, let's get a darker one just in case. And again, looking at this on camera, I think that's too dark. But I need to look at the patterns because maybe there's some outlining and maybe those two together. Who knows? But yeah, looking at it here and going, I think this is, I think this is the right color for that. I think that's as close as I'm going to get, believe it or not. Um, so I picked up those two. I, as I said, I looked at the DMCs, um, and so then I wrote myself a grandiose note of, you know, gigantic size. So this has to go into the bag as well. Um, so the DMC that I think is closest to this is 161. We'll have to see how that goes. Uh, the 932 is actually looking fairly similar in color to what I call the gray in this particular, in the whisk and 964 as an aqua up for consideration. Again, the final, it's, for me, I go and I get my options so that when I'm actually getting ready to start this, I can look at my options and make some final decisions. Because usually when I'm starting it, it's usually, you know, at nine o'clock at night. It's not some great time like 10 o'clock in the morning when stores are open and I could maybe go like, that's not the right choice. So I get all my options and I bring them home and go like, okay, surely from this bundle, you'll, you will have something that works. But while I was there, cause they had the anchors and I know I showed the anchor on the spools, but uh, the store that I was at, uh, as far as I know, it's only Michael's that got, that have the anchor floss on the spools. Um, the other cross stitch stores that I know um, have anchor on skeins. And again, from a storage perspective, I think I'm still going with the skeins because it works with my flossaways better. Those spools are bulk up the, the rings anyway. So I picked up a couple of anchor uh, just to fit in around sort of what this aqua spatula looks like. And again, while I'm looking at it on camera, this lighter one is looking pretty good, but you know, it's not bad either. So I picked up those because again, I don't have a large swath of anchor uh, floss in my house. So I picked those up as options. Uh, <clears throat> I picked up this classic Colorworks mint julep. Again, just, I don't think it's as good with this one. I think it's an interesting color, particularly when you put it up against the whisk because the whisk has the multiple colors. And in this one, <clears throat> sorry, I'm gonna have to do that one more time. <clears throat> maybe even a third it's getting worse every time I do it um, <clears throat> okay I think we're back um, I think this is the one uh, it's got a little more of a gray undertone which fits in with this which is why it came up as a debatable I don't know that it's necessarily the right choice but I got it saying it's an option and you know I like options the other one that I picked up was this Gentle Art Cottage Blue. Now this is an interesting one because it does, it's going to be hard to see on camera, it does have sort of that aqua feel with a gray in it. So as an over dyed, it was an interesting combination and again holding it up, not necessarily over here with either of these, but with the whisk it was an interesting option. And again, when we get into the real, you know, decision time, we'll see how that goes. But these, uh, I laugh because I, I had to keep them in a bag so that I can keep them all together so that I know that they're for this project. Now, now that I've shown it here, it can now go into a specific project bag with the charts. And quite frankly, uh, that bag is also going to have the kitchen equipment goes in there as well. Because otherwise, you know, I'm going to put somewhere really special and safe, which means it will take me three years to find it again. So it's actually gonna go into the cross-stitching bag. 
yep, that's what's going to happen there. So happy with those options. Again, um, don't know exactly when those are going to get started, but I've done my work to sort of say I think I've got the options. Uh, we'll talk about plans in, in a little bit here. Um, so I also picked up, um, I was looking at some of those charts that I've been showing over the last number of weeks. Um, and one of those beach ones uh, called for Island Blue, which I was surprised to discover I did not have in my stash. So a very lovely tealy uh, green, very, um, trying to think where is it that I've seen the most azure or it's not azure, but like tealy green water, and I'm having a moment saying, is it in the Caribbean I found that? Anyway, Caribbean, Mediterranean, I think about that one. Anyway, um, it called for this, and then it called for another overdyed um, that had some brown in it, and the store that I was at actually had the other one. It was great, I, and I looked at those two together and went, wow, is that a horrible combination? And my recollection from the chart is that it only called for these for these two colors. Maybe one other color is some back stitching, but I was like, these were the these are the two colors that make up pretty much most of the design. And so I looked at the called for other color and went, not good, not good, not good, very unhappy, very unhappy. And but fortunately, um, you know, so I'd seen what the other one looked like. So it was a combination of sort of browns, which again. It's about a beach, um, a beach topic for that particular design, which, okay, fine. I will acknowledge that for most of the world, sand tends to be in the brown range. If you want to see crystal clear, beautiful white silica sand, White Haven Island off the east coast of Australia is amazing. That is my favorite beach of all time, of all time. It's amazing. Whew, anyway, uh, so I knew what the concept was, and so I I grabbed this because I knew I didn't have this, and then quite frankly, I did the same thing. I just wandered around and looked at the classic color works, all of the overdyed threads, both silk and cottons, and you know me, it's like let's just get something that works. And so I ended up in the Weeks Dye Works land, and got myself some mallard. Because I think the greens in here at least coordinate with this. Um, I think I will, it's hard to see on camera, I, I think it's coming up that it's pretty much identical and it's not. The green in here is absolutely lighter than um, this tealy green here in whatever this is called, again, Island Blue. But again, so this does have the sort of uh, brown, light, lighter sand color in there. To be quite frankly, it's an it's uh, to do a border around this. I think is my recollection. <laughs> I should probably check on that, and I should probably go and check on see what the stitch count is for this thing, so I can see whether or not one one is enough to do it, or whether I should have gotten two. <laughs> if not, hey, upside is at least I've got the colors picked out. Then we just have to solve the other problem. So actually, so that's another task that we'll do today as well. But I was happy with how those look together and I think that will work for the piece. And again, these will not, I won't necessarily put these into my stash. I'm probably gonna put them in the bag with the chart so I remember and write myself a piece of paper that says, by the way, this is what you've changed these to so that I remember when it comes time to stitch that. All right. So I also, uh, had a little bit of a junk kit and I'm just looking over here going I'm missing one of my flosses so I know I should pause it but I don't it doesn't really work pause well on this one so I'm just going to run and get one other thing because it will explain why I made the choice that I did so I happened across some fabric in my travels now, this is the one that got me. This is 32 count 
Calypso Linen from Picture This Plus. Now I have some Calypso Lugana in my stash, um, but I will acknowledge, which is very typical of uh, how dye works on linen versus Lugana, that the color intensity, and this is not doing it justice. Uh, let's do a little harsh one. Let's see how this. Yeah, no. So it's, um, so I have Calypso in a Lugana, which I'm totally fine with. But when I saw the Calypso in the linen, it is a much more intense color. And again, it's more intense than what you're seeing on camera, which I acknowledge is not for everybody. And it's not for every design. Um, but I liked how it looked and I had these visions of things that I can do with this. Um, I had talked to a friend of mine and she was like, what are you really planning? It's like, it's like, I can see it in my head and it's like a mandala type esque thing. I can do it in a monochromatic. And of course I couldn't come up with the name and came home and then of course went. So I've got a couple of options. They're ink circle designs. So we all know mandala esque. Um, but I was just like, I, I have this vision of what a couple of them could look like on this particular fabric. And because it's so much more intense, um, that's, that's why it came home. So I only got a wide eighth. Um, I quite frankly, I don't think I even looked to see if they had any more. Um, so look at that restraint. <laughs> um, so I have some concepts for this, no final decisions. Um, but again, it's Picture This Plus and Picture This Plus is taking eight to 10 months to ship orders. So even if I, if I had said, I want a wide quarter, um, I want a wide quarter and I'll order it, I, which I could totally do. I could totally say to the shop, I want a wide quarter of this in 32 count, etc., etc. It would mean that I would be waiting for eight to 10 months. Now let's all remember I've got a five year stitching plan and whatever this is does not appear in the next, it, this is not appearing as far as I know at the moment in 2022. So even if it showed up in 2023, I'm all good. Um, but I got it as the wide eighth because I can put it into my stash because it then does provide me the color comparison between this and the Lugana. So there's that. And yes, I'm acknowledging yet again, I've blown a stitch from stash. So that's part of, as I think about 2022, what I'm really going to set as a goal for myself. Anyway, let's, let's see. <laughs> Somebody else I know said, did you really think you were going to be successful at that? I went, that doesn't feel supportive. <laughs> I think they were laughing at me with justifiably. They've known me for a long time. Okay. Uh, one of the other pieces of fabric that I got is this vintage Tiffany from Fabrics by Stephanie. So uh, again, this is a 32 count linen. So for someone who's just said, you know, my favorite is a 32 count even weave Lugana or Jobelin. Yes, the two pieces of fabric I'm showing today are linens. Yes, again, because color trumps. So this is the fabric, um, if, I, if I recall correctly, this is the fabric that is called for for the hands-on design Santa series. So she did a series of nine ornaments. So you buy eight charts and each one has a little bit of the ninth one. Um, anyway, so I, if I recall correctly, this is the called for for that. And again, while I was trolling around in, you know, apparently this color, this colorway, this came home as well. This is a wide quarter. They did have a wide quarter for which I was very grateful because I'm not sure it would have come home if it was only a wide eighth because what I'm thinking of doing is using my infamous Hudson's Bay um, Karen Water Lilies. Here's the, here's the tag. Again, to do a monochromatic mandala type thing on there. I think that will be fantastic. So I'm very happy with that, with this color combination and again. So what's gonna happen is in this bag, so I'm going to try to figure out which of the mandala designs that I want to use this with and then put 
one skein of, because I have a, a few skeins of this particular color. Um, well, if I'm going to put it with a chart, I should probably figure out what the white number is and put those in there. But that's my, that's what I'm thinking my color combination will be. So I was happy with that one as well. Yes, I'm putting it back in the bag. Okay. Uh, so there were a few more uh, stash acquisitions, which I was actually, <laughs> even before I started, I was like, you need to get these things. And I swear I put them in here, but I have no idea where they are. Uh, so there were a couple. So last week I said I showed you my um, Needlework Expo haul, and that was my, it absolutely was my Needlework Expo haul from my LNS. But there was one design that came out at Expo, which was a limited edition. Um, my LNS couldn't get it, which happens. Limited editions, it all depends on how fast things sell out and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then I had to troll online and find places and figure out shipping and, you know, international shipping and all that kind of stuff. So I did end up, uh, I found a place, I ordered it, it has arrived. I'm, I'm thrilled that I've got it. But I'm looking around going like, I swear I put it in this room so I would have it for this video. And I don't. So there's still going to be more stash coming in. And you know my problem is, is that once I've broken stitch from stash and I've busted the budget, that's usually when, you know, everything breaks loose from the shopping habits. <laughs> anyway. All right. So there's going to be more stash to show next week. Um, let's talk about some plans. Um, so plans this week are again, working on the temperature tree because I'm working on trying to catch up, which I think I'm doing very well at, um, like, so if I, so what I've really been accomplishing on the temperature tree is I've actually been getting about one month done a week. Um, so I'm expecting that now I will say, um, Part of the reason why I didn't get that last one, the Stony Creek finished, is because I spent all that time getting these tree branches accomplished. Um, you know, again, because as you go up the tree, the branches get longer. Um, so the tree branches are taking longer. And I focused on, you know, getting both May and June done. So, um, anyway, so for sure my expectation is that I will have all of June leaves accomplished by next week and finished off the branch and hopefully gotten a decent start on the July branch as well. Again, um, it will be very interesting to see how I come along with my October piece and see how my daily stitching is coming along with that. Uh, there are other elements besides words on this particular design, so I haven't officially decided about when I'm going to work those in. Um, the two that are closest to the words that I've done, one calls for gener Gentle Arts Raven which I haven't been able to locate. Now, I know the DMC equivalent is 310 and I shouldn't wig myself out about it. So I should probably just make a decision. And one of the other ones is one where it's like, I need to make the decision about whether or not I'm going to use um, glow in the dark thread or not. So I'm probably gonna put off both of those two things and just continue on with words and make a decision later in the month about what I'm doing about that. So stay tuned on that one. And I've been spending some time this week, so revisiting, you know, because we are coming up to the end of the year, so review your plan for 2022. So I'm looking at my 2022 plan and seeing if I'm tweaking anything. Um, it's it's holding in, in, in place pretty well. There's not a lot of, there hasn't been a lot of changes. There's been a couple of tweaks about what I think I'm working on and when and what that may look like. But so far, it's holding in really well. We're going to be doing a different, I think I said this in one of the other videos that I had friends said, like, well, you're going to continue on with this, like, every every month, you're just going to start your new project, just like you did this year. And the answer is no, that's not my plan for next year. I have, I'm working on a different, how I approach my stitching and what I'm doing in any given month is going to be different next year, because I'm up for trying new things. I've also said that I actually am really enjoying having a five-year stitching plan and for those of you who like to be spur of the moment 
stitch what you want when you want whenever you want that's great too um, I'm really enjoying having a five-year plan because what it's giving me is it's giving me a concrete plan where it says I have this plan that says these things are going to get started not sure exactly when all of them are going to get finished but at least they're all going to get started on so like I say part of the benefit I'm thrilled that I did Stony Creek September because it means that a, a chart that has been languishing in my stash for 25 years has finally come out and been started. So it is now on the path to being completed. I don't have a specific end date for when it's going to get completed, but it's certainly, I have accomplished more in the month of September 2021 on that particular piece than I have in the previous 25 years. So the benefit for me of having this five-year plan is I'm concretely getting to say you're going to you're going to pull this stuff out and you're going to start working on it which means you're at least on the road to getting some of them finished which is really great. So we're coming up to the end of year one of my five-year plan. 2021 is coming to a close. I know people don't like when I say that. Yep 2021 is coming to a to a close which means I need to add on another year to my five-year plan. So as part of my working career, I've done a lot of five-year plans and all this kind of stuff and what I've had to present to a wide range of bankers and rating agencies and all that kind of stuff has been five-year plans. So I'm very familiar, I'm very familiar with this concept, which is maybe why I enjoy having a five-year stitching plan. But uh, so what I need to do is I need to work on the new fifth year, which will be 2026. So over the course of the next couple of months, I will be working on what my 2026 plan is going to look like. And one of the great things that I came up with this week is I was looking through something. I don't even remember how it came up, but this, this design popped up and whatever it was that I was looking for. And I was like, oh, I have that. I have that in my stash. And immediately I went December 2026. That's, that's what's going in for December 2026. So again... Uh, now I have to haul the chart out and see what it, see what it, it calls for. I already know that I'm changing the fabric, that it's, it's going on and all that kind of stuff. But I love this chart. This chart was a gift to me from a very good friend and I love it and would love to, ha would love to have it stitched. So I know where that is going in, uh, the five year plan at this point in time, as I say, I'm working on the rest of the months. So one of the other things that I wanted to talk about very briefly, uh, Victoria Sampler, um, I'm in the Victoria Sampler Facebook group. Victoria Sampler is retiring. Now, as far as I can tell, it doesn't mean that you won't be able to get the charts, but I think they will be sort of moving their charts all over to PDFs so that they aren't having to print. But they haven't explicitly they haven't been very concrete about what their plan is about chart availability after they fully retire. They have been very clear that the accessory packs for the Victoria charts, Victoria sampler charts will be discontinued. So whatever they currently have in stock is it. They will be making no more. And so there has been some chatter in the Facebook group about people who are going like, I have this chart. I didn't get the accessory pack and now I can't find it. What do I do? Um, so they have um, on the Victoria Sampler page, um, they have come up with their own conversions for called for threads in their charts and their conversions from those things to DMC. You know, because there are, there are charts where there's a ton of colors of different fibers that they're using, which is why they do where, why they did these uh, thread packs um, but when you can't get them there and there have been people saying like there's no way that I would be able to afford buying all of these colors in these threads like that's just not in the budget totally totally get that too so they have come up with a very specific Victoria sampler conversion thread list that will take you from uh, threads that are called for in Victoria Sampler charts and converting them to DMC equivalents. So in case any of you are in that boat, um, I have, I know when I heard that they were planning on retiring and they kind of threw out an announcement that said like, hey, if you are missing thread packs, uh, get them now. 
um, I remember going through my Victoria sampler charts and looking at what I had and um, I've been pretty good um, about buying the thread packs as I was buying Victoria sampler charts because again my mother has taught me like if it requires special things get the special things when you can get them because you aren't always guaranteed to be able to get them now I could go out and buy all the threads called for if I'm missing them and I have that backup but now I was very grateful to say I've also downloaded this Victoria sampler conversion chart just in case now I've looked at my Victoria sampler charts and went you've got you've got Victoria sampler charts for the next 20 years plus the thread packs for those charts <clears throat> you're fine so but I still have these moments where you're like you really should check that but anyway I'm I keep saying to myself you're good where you are and given you you all know exactly how many Victoria sampler charts that I've completed in the current year vous sake. so <laughs> you know based on that pace I'm in an awesome spot <laughs> now I will say there are Victoria sampler charts more than one showing up in the five-year plan which again I I'm really grateful that those are there and I'm really grateful that I've got them anyway so check back later as to when those again here are, here are random hints for things that will be happening uh, in my stitching plan over the next five years <laughs> who knows if philosophy will exist five years from now but I've got a, a five-year plan and Victoria sampler is playing a role in that um, okay, so that's just a note. I will put a link to the spot on the Victoria Sampler webpage so that you can find and download this conversion chart if any of you have Victoria Sampler charts and have any interest in that. So I will put that link in the notes as well. And last, uh, but by no means least, uh, this came out this week uh, from Stone Street Stitchworks. So similar to Pandemic from Long Dog Samplers, um, Stone Street Stitchworks ha is releasing a free chart. It's not small. It's a very sampler, uh, it's a reproduction sampler. Um, it is free for the month of October, which is why I'm very specifically starting off now because you're gonna hear about it every week through October saying, don't forget, um, and again, I don't know exactly when I would stitch on this and I don't know what I, I have no concrete plans for this and I'm not overly samplery, but it's free and it's free for a limited time, which means I download it immediately. So I've already downloaded this because this is free only for the month of October, after which it will still be available, but it will be a chart that you need to pay for on her Etsy shop, just like Pandemic was. But this is up for the month of October. This is Stone Street Stitchworks, France's Sweet Love 1827. Now, again, because the color isn't coming through very well, um, this sampler, the called for colors, there are two colors. It's a very uh, teal green again and black. Now, um, the commentary around this pattern is it's like I'm not sure whether it's because she ran out of the other color or if this is a specific design choice um, but I do think it's an interesting colorway because you don't tend to see a lot of uh, samplers certainly not from this time period that are done in a teal green now do you have to do it in teal green of course not if you want to do it in blue do it in blue if you want to do it in yellow do it in yellow if you want to do it in teal great if you want to do it in red you can make this whatever you want you could use it in one color or two colors or five colors again with this type of chart you can do whatever you want with it but i just wanted to highlight this because this is free for the month of october and i've already downloaded it all right and with that uh, that's all i've got for you this week like i said <laughs> still looking around this room going where are those i swear i brought them in here but anyway uh, I hope everybody's had a great week. I hope you have found some time to do some stitching. I hope that everyone is staying safe and staying healthy because the numbers where I am, they're not good. So I'm being uber careful. Um, even though I'm fully vaccinated, uh, I also acknowledge that the vaccination does not give you 100% protection, certainly not against some of the variants that are swirling around. So I'm being very careful. 
so that I can actually have Thanksgiving with my parents. Um, anyway, so I hope everybody's staying safe and staying healthy. Those are really critical pieces to having an enjoyable life. And the other part is that I hope that you're finding some time to do some stitching and finding some enjoyment in that. As always, uh, please like and subscribe. And if you've got any questions or comments or topics that you would like uh, me to address, happy to have those comments down in the, in the comment section below. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.